What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video, all this stuff, and in this video I'm checking out the D4 Mini on-camera microphone from Deity. As always with these videos, I want to find out what it sounds like, whether you get good value for money, good build quality, good user experience, and most importantly, whether it's any good. You may not be aware of this, but I now have a Patreon for this channel. It's a non-profit thing. The idea is any funds from Patreon, I buy gear and then I review it and give them away to you guys afterwards. And that's exactly what's gonna happen with this video. I'm gonna give this exact microphone away to one of my Patreon backers. This is actually the second one I've given away and it's only been running a short amount of time and include this kind of thing and all the software and LUTs that I've given away. It's actually, it amounts to hundreds of dollars that I've given away in a, just a very short, space of time. So if you'd like the chance to win this microphone, plus there'll be lots of other things given away in future, and you'll be supporting the channel, do check out my Patreon link, it's in the description box below. So what is this? The Dirty D4 Mini is an on-camera microphone that is designed to be a dramatic upgrade slash replacement for the disgusting sounding internal microphones that cameras have. And I cannot stress just how huge an upgrade this is from the internal microphones, which are generally very inexpensive for the manufacturer, they have very small capsules, they are generally omnidirectional, aka pick up sound from all directions, and the upgrade to this, which has a comparatively very large capsule, is worth, the components are worth much more, and it's got a nice cardioid pattern. That upgrade is massive. In fact, let me show you. What you've been hearing so far is my usual microphone setup of an AKG C414 microphone, which is very high-end, so it really should sound good. But I'm gonna unplug everything now and show you what the difference sounds like. There we go, you're now hearing the internal mic of my Sony a7S III. It's probably sounding awful, it's probably sounding what I would call trashy, and you can probably hear lots of the room. Uh, you can probably hear the whir of my computer behind me, it's doing some transcoding at the moment. I've got a laptop over there, it's quite warm in the room, so that's making some noise too. It's just going to be sounding bad. Right, I'm going to plug in the D4 Mini now and show you how they compare. And now you're hearing the D4, and with its much larger capsule, the fact that it's got a cardioid pattern, the fact that it's directed towards me, and the components are so much more expensive, I imagine it sounds night and day. And back to my normal AKG expensive microphone, and I think when you consider the massive price difference, you can definitely start to see some form of diminishing returns with this expensive mic. After all, it is 14 times more expensive than the D4 Mini, and I would say not 14 times better. Not that they're comparable, of course. Lol. One of the really great things about this mic, and one of the reasons that they're so popular, is the fact that they don't require batteries. They get all the power they need from the tiny amount of current that comes out of your camera, typically one to five volts, and that's just all they need. And that's why I really appreciate that aspect of this microphone, and it's just simple. And who doesn't appreciate simplicity? Simple, that aspect of it may be, but that doesn't mean it's devoid of cool features. You may have noticed there are two 3.5mm jack sockets on the side of the D4 Mini, an output and an input. The output obviously plugs into your camera and gives you your regular dual mono signal. The input, however, is interesting. When you plug something into this input, it overrides the right channel. And think about the possibilities of that. You could plug in another D4 Mini and do something cool with that. You could plug in a wired lav, you could plug in a wireless receiver and plug in something at the other end of that. The possibilities are endless. Plus, the tiny voltage that's sent to the D4 Mini from your camera, that voltage is passed on so you can then power another mic of that type. So good. So I thought let's just try it out for this video. You can see I've got the D4 Mini, that's plugged into the input of my camera, and then I've got the Dirty Pocket Wireless plugged into the input of the D4. These are gonna make it onto my audio file panned hard left and right. So how cool is this? I've got the Dirty D4 Mini sat on my camera recording audio, and that's what you're hearing right now. I've also cleverly hidden a lav mic receiver on me somewhere, you probably, if you, yeah, you probably haven't seen where it is. If you haven't seen it, it's right here. And uh, that's what you're hearing now. So how cool is that? I've got them both plugged into the D4 Mini. And for an entry-level mic, 
This is just such an amazing feature. You also get a TRS to TRRS cable, which means that by using an adapter, it becomes compatible with your phone. And phones generally have not brilliant built-in microphones, and this is great news. Anyway, on to the build quality. So, no surprise, it's an extremely light and small microphone. It adds a whopping 28 grams, or one ounce, to your rig, and it only measures at 7.8 centimeters, which is 3.1 inches long. What? I'll grow up. It's made from aluminium, which I love. Aluminium is a great material for this kind of product. It's lightweight, sturdy, stylish, sustainable, and awesome. And just to compare, the Rode VideoMicro is made from plastic and costs more. What? You get the now industry standard Ryko shot mount for isolating the mic and minimizing rumble from handling your camera. You also get a dead cat style windshield, or in this case, dead vol or shrew or something. Anyway, it works well. I appreciate it. Of course, be sure to always remove this if you're shooting video indoors because no matter how small, it will have uh, an impact on your frequency response, so just whip it off. And also, I mentioned that there's an input on the microphone nearer towards the middle of the barrel, and don't worry, you can use this and there's still room for the dead cat uh, whilst using both. Anyway, next, user experience. Well, the D4 Mini couldn't really be easier to use. You just plug it into your camera, set your game, record. But the aspect of the user experience that I'm more interested in is just how much work is involved to get it sounding its absolute best when you've got it in your editing software. We know that if you've got something plugged into the input of your microphone, there's gonna be some editing involved because those two inputs are gonna be hard panned left and right. Let me show you an easy way of sorting that out in editing. So here we are in Final Cut Pro, and this is going to be a similar process regardless of which editing program you're using. So first of all, if you simply want to fix the two signals being hard panned left and right, all you need to do is head up to the inspector, select the audio panel, head down to the audio configuration, and where it says stereo, just use the drop down menu and select dual mono. From there, we can see dialogue one and dialogue two. Dialogue one is the left signal, dialogue two is the right and you can just switch on or switch off whichever one you need. And that's that, very simple. However, this technique isn't quite as elegant as I would like because I definitely prefer to use EQ and compression. And usually if you're using two different sound sources, you'll want to process them in quite different ways. So my method for processing the two audio sources separately is to copy your clip and paste a duplicate on top of your original. Then with our top clip, I'm gonna disable dialogue two, making that one just the left signal only, and then switch off dialogue one on the bottom clip, making that the right signal. I'm then going to detach the audio from the top clip, select it and delete it because we don't need it, and then do the same thing for the bottom clip. So now we have our two audio tracks separated and we can add EQ, compression, whatever we want. So onto the question of how does it sound in real world tests, and I'm going to test both my voice and some acoustic guitar to see how they sound, but before I do, the experience I've had from Deity microphones so far is they've always had a really nice balanced tone. So often from other manufacturers I found this type of microphone to be so trebly, so top heavy, and to be honest I can see why, because those high frequencies are the most hourly exciting to us as human beings. But in my opinion, brightness is too often used as a measure of sound quality, with reviews citing crispness as a factor. To me, I value a balanced tone more, because to be honest, I'm always going to do some form of EQ and compression, and I'd rather start with a blank canvas and work from there. Anyway, now let's see what sort of tones we can get from this microphone. So here we are, I'm using the Deity D4 Mini and it's roughly about arm's length from me and it's just on top of my Sony A7S III. Other gear wise, I'll just, just so I can talk, I'm using the Lupo Movie Light 300 Dual Color Pro, which is a brilliant light. Uh, it's just up there and I've got uh, an OC T7 monitor and that's about it. Right, now let's Hear this again, but with EQ and compression. So here we are, I'm using the Deity D4 Mini, and it's roughly about arm's length from me, and it's just on top of my Sony A7S III. Other gear wise, I'll just, just so I can talk, I'm using the Lupo Movie Light 300 Dual Color Pro, which is a brilliant light. Uh, it's just up there, and I've got uh, an OC T7 monitor, 
and that's about it. And then I got the guitar out and this is what it sounds like with no processing whatsoever. <laughs> So now looking at the same clip, but with some EQ, compression, and a touch of reverb. The D4 takes processing really well. Next, looking at value, and the D4 very much falls into that sort of no-brainer territory. It just offers such a monumental upgrade from internal microphones that it, it's just, there's no reason not to own one of these. I'd say even if your normal setup is to use a much higher end, much more expensive microphone, not to own one of these and just have it in your bag as a backup just seems nuts, doesn't it? And now to a question that I'm sure has crossed your mind. How does it compare to the Rode Video Micro? And there are some similarities. It's a similar size, it's a similar price, and that's about where the similarities end. With the D4 Mini, you get more functionality. You get arguably better build quality, it's aluminium versus plastic, and the D4 is slightly less, costs slightly less, so arguably I would say it's better value for money as well. You want to hear them back to back? You got it. So now I want to see how the Deity D4 Mini compares in terms of sound quality to the Rode Video Micro. I like that mic, I like what I've heard so far from the, the Deity, so let's, let's switch over now, see what the differences are. And there we go, you're now hearing the Rode Video Micro, it's at exactly the same distance from me, and what do you think? Can you notice any kind of difference? I usually find with these Rode mics that they have quite a bit of top end, so I think before doing any kind of EQ, that's probably the one that will show the best, you know, straight out of camera, but I don't know. Moving on to guitars now, and just to note, I was able to plug the Rode Video Micro into the input on the D4. Therefore, I could record the two microphones simultaneously. Just to note, the Rode was actually significantly quieter, so I've added about three decibels during editing. So here's the D4 Mini, straight out of camera, no processing. <laughs> Now it's time for the pros and cons, and we'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly the pros, and it is a huge, huge upgrade from internal mics. It's just an area not to skimp on, and you'll love the upgrade in sound quality. The value is undeniable, I struggle to find a better value mic of this type anywhere on the market. I really appreciate the simplicity of it, it's quite a plug and play product. I also appreciate that it has more functionality than you'd expect for a product of this price. And when you consider it's considered a entry level product. I love the aluminium construction. It's really nice and small and lightweight. Big thumbs up for the build quality side of things. I also really love the sound quality. I think it's very balanced and it gives me a really nice blank canvas for EQing and compression. And onto the cons and 
out of camera without any work, I kind of prefer the sound of the Rode Video Micro. However, after some tweaking, there's really nothing to it. Not really a con for me, but will be for some people. To get the best out of this mic, you're best off doing some EQ and compression, but this really doesn't take a lot of work and yields really nice results. Other than that, I mean, you tell me. If you can think of any, pop them in the comment section. Finally, to my opinion, and I think I've covered it all in this video, it's a really kind of great little no-brainer purchase that's really quite hard to fold. Is it the best sounding mic in the world? Obviously not. Does it sound good? Well, yeah. It sounds better than it has any right to at that kind of crazy low price point. And I'm not going to use mine. The reasons for this are twofold. I already mentioned the first one, I'm going to be giving it away, so the not having it will facilitate the not using it. But also because I use the Deity D4 Duo, which I previously reviewed, it's got more functionality and it's just more awesome. I reviewed it, do check out my review, I'll pop it up there and in the description box below. Anyway, that's it for now, I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. Do you own this microphone? Are there other microphones of this type which you think I just have to check out and maybe do some sort of comparison video? That can, it's all possible. Let me know. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has selected this video for you, so definitely check that one out and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.